What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of PS4 Jailbreak Tutorials. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to run trainers and mod tools on your jailbroken PS4 so that you can install mods and mainly cheats on your PS4 games, on most of your PS4 games. So essentially, the kind of cheats that you can do are things like modifying your resources, how much money you have in the game, things like infinite ammo, infinite health, infinite stamina, that kind of stuff. So yeah, just basically cheats that you can install on your PS4 games to give yourself a bit of an advantage or to be able to, you know, skip a, skip a grindy section of a game, for example, whatever you want to do. So there's a few different ways to do this. There's a couple of trainers, big trainers that have mods for many, many, many different games, uh, like the PS4 Web Trainer by Tyler Mods. And then there's also the offline tra trainer as well that I'll show you that you can use without an internet connection and also mod tools that you can run on a computer that can basically remotely mod games over your network connection that can give you more mods on specific games like PS4 AIO, which I've just updated to support 7.55. So I'll show you guys that at the end of the video as well. So, okay, so let's have a look at using the offline trainer first. So what we're gonna do is go on to the internet browser and we're gonna go on to one of the exploit hosts that actually has the offline trainer on it. So carol218.ir has the offline trainer. So does PRB's host and I believe Night King's host has it as well. So go to one of those exploit hosts. I'll link them down in the video description. And you're going to want to go to the PS4 trainer offline and select that option. And what that's going to do is cache the trainer in your browser so that you'll be able to run it offline once it's fully cached. Okay, so now the trainer has been fully cached. Now you might be wondering well, that's great, but you have to be online to cache it in the first place. What if I want to be completely offline from the start? Well, in that case, you can use something like an ESP8266 to host the exploit, one of those chips, those Wi-Fi chips, or host it on your phone. I covered it in episode two, how to host the exploit locally. So you can host it locally and essentially just cache it while you're hosting it locally. And then once it's cached, you can then turn off your network completely and use the cached version. So that's a completely offline solution. Okay, so once you've cached the trainer in your browser, you're then gonna to want to cache the exploit as well, because we're gonna to want to be able to run the exploit offline as well. So I'm just gonna select, you know, the 7.55 exploit, 755A I think is the latest one. So I'm gonna select 755A and then let it cache that exploit in my browser as well. So the trainer will be cached and the exploit will be cached so I can use the trainer and all of the payloads offline. Okay, so that's the exploit cached as well. So now we can just hit the middle button and turn off our network connection now. Go down to network, turn it off in the settings. So now when I go back onto the internet, it should have bookmarked the PS4 trainer, the offline version, as you can see right there. So we can just basically delete everything else that's in here and obviously clear our cookies to give us a better chance of loading the exploit successfully. So if I go onto the trainer now, you can see it loads much faster. And then we can go to 755A to take us to the exploit that we cached. Okay, so that's the WebKit exploit loaded now, 100%. And then once it gets to 100% on this particular exploit, it then gives you different jailbreaks, different kernel exploits you can run. So we'll just run the latest version. Because I've already ran a payload before, it just takes me straight in. So once you get the exploit loaded, you can then run your Gold Hen payload or Mira in order to be able to run your fake package games. Once you've ran that, you then need to run the web RTE payload because this is the payload that the trainer uses in order to be able to attach to the game and enable the cheats for your games. So we're gonna run web RTE. So it'll say waiting for payload. You'll know it's working because it'll say PS4 trainer. That'll be the next message that should pop up. There you go, PS4 trainer. And then after that, we should get visit ps4trainer.com. So at that point, we can hit the middle button on our PS4 controller, our PS button, and then go to launch the game that you're wanting to enable the cheats on. So we'll just use Days Gone as an example. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the game running here, no problem. So what I'm gonna do is just minimize the game by hitting the PS button and then pressing the options button, going down to information, checking what game version we're on. So as you can see, we're on version 1.00 because we need to make sure whatever trainer we're using is set up for that specific game version. So if we're on 1.00, we need to use the 1.00 trainer. So what we can do now is go back into the internet browser and go back on to our trainer 
uh, website right here that's cached in the browser. And what you need to do, as you can see here, it says localhoster 0.0.0.0. So if you're offline, you can enter either localhost or 0.0.0.0 as the IP address. So I'll just enter the word localhost in, which should get it working. So localhost, make sure there's no spaces before or after the name. Then we can go ahead and search for the name of the game that we're wanting to mod. So in this case, it's going to be Days Gone. So we can go ahead and search for Days Gone right there. And as you can see, there's four different versions. And these relate to mainly different game versions. So like I said, you know, we're on 1.00, so we need to load the 1.00 trainer. If you're on 1.61, you would use the 1.61 trainer, 1.51 trainer, etc. But there's also different game region versions as well, like different CUSA numbers, which obviously relates to things like the European version or the US version or the Japanese version. There are going to be these different title ID versions. So whereas with the game version, you must be on the correct game version in order for the trainer to work. With the title ID versions, it's a bit different. So in a lot of cases, even if you have a different title ID version, as long as you're on the same game version, the same game update, then in most cases, the trainer should still work because the addresses will be the same, even though they're different title ID versions. Occasionally though, depending on the game, you might find that the addresses are different between the different title ID versions. So you need to make sure you select the correct title ID version for your game. For example, in my case, I actually have Days Gone version 09176, not 09175, but this trainer for 175 should work even though it's a different title ID version because I'm on the same game version and the addresses don't change between those two versions. So because of that, we are good to go right here. So I can go ahead and select this uh, trainer. And when I select it, as you can see, it says trainer attached in the top left hand corner and down in the status bar, which lets you know that it has successfully connected to the game. And one of the issues that can come up is when you try and load it, you might just get the little kind of spinning loading sign and this menu never comes up with the options. If that happens, then something's gone wrong with the WebRTE payload. You'll have to reboot the PS4 and try and load it again. So the thing that causes that is when you run the WebRTE payload and then you go into the settings menu. For some reason, going into the settings menu kind of screws up the WebRTE payload. Either that or disabling and enabling your network connection after you've already ran the WebRTE payload. It's one or the other. One of those two things causes that issue. So the best thing to do is make sure you have already disabled your network connection and you've done everything you wanted to do in the settings before you run the WebRTE payload. So you run the WebRTE payload and then go into the game, then activate the trainer and you shouldn't run into that issue. So anyway, now that we have the trainer attached, we can go ahead and enable all of the cheats that we want. So, you know, infinite stamina, infinite ammo, infinite items, bandages as well. So once we've done that, we can hit the middle button on our PS4 and go back into the game. And we should have all of that currently enabled. So if I just get off the bike, the infinite stamina does appear to be working. So I'm running around and the stamina bar, which is the blue bar in the bottom left hand corner, is not going down. And I have basically infinite ammo, even though I have to reload, um, my ammo goes back up to 125. And then we can also test the, the fuel to see if the fuel in the motorcycle goes down as we're driving along. And we should also have infinite nitrous as well. So if I hold down X, that activates nitrous. And okay, crap, of course I run into the one part of road that's blocked. Let's go in the other way. All right, so hold down X, we get our nitrous. And yeah, it's it's not going down. So we have infinite nitrous going on and I'm not seeing any fuel reducing either. So we've got infinite fuel. All of those things are now working. So yeah, that's essentially how you use the offline trainer. So let's have a look at the online trainer now as well. So what I'm going to do is just close out of Days Gone and we'll run Ghost of Tsushima just to do a different game, just as an example. Okay, so here we are on Ghosts of Tsushima. I'm not sure if there's that many uh, mods in this particular game, but what I'm going to do is just pause it here and again, hit the middle button to exit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect back to the internet because this time we're going to use the online trainer. Um, so the advantage of the online trainer is that it will probably be updated more often than the offline one, um, obviously, because it's online. 
And also because it's an online trainer, you can access it from other devices that are connected to your network. So you don't have to just load it from the PS4's web browser. You could be playing the game and, you know, have the online trainer on your phone and just be enabling and disabling cheats for the game from your phone. As long as it's connected to the same network as your PS4, then that should work. The same with your, your computer. If your computer is connected to the same network as the PS4, you can load the trainer on your computer's web browser and, you know, enable and disable cheats that way. So of course you can use the PS4's web browser just as we did with the offline trainer, but for the online trainer, we'll go ahead and run it on our computer's internet browser for a change. So let's go ahead and go into our settings and go down to system, system information to get our PS4's IP address. As you can see, mine ends in 1.95. So once you have the PS4's IP address, we can switch over to the computer or phone or whatever device, as long as it's connected to the same network as your PS4 you'll be able to use the trainer on that device as long as it has a modern web browser. So on our computer, all we need to do is go to the website ps4trainer.com. And if we go to that website, click on the trainer tab in the top right hand corner, and that will take you to the trainer itself. Everything loads much, much faster. It is mainly designed to be used on another device, not the PS4, even though you can use it on the PS4, it's recommended to use it on you know your phone or your computer's web browser so we just type in the ip address again 168.1.95 you can go ahead and search for ghost or ghost of tsushima ghost of tsushima pops up we can click it so you can see it says trainer attached we can do infinite health all the same stuff re-enable all of that again as you can see it's popping up there in the top left hand corner so it is indeed working so I've put them side to side just to show, as you can see, if I disable infinite health, you can see it pops up there on the PS4, infinite health disabled. And then if I go back into the game and the guys attack me, you can see the health's now going back down. So yeah, that's basically it. That is how you use the web trainer on another device, essentially. You can use the trainer on another device as long as it's connected to the same network as your PS4. And you'll be able to, you know, enable and disable your cheats remotely from that device uh, whenever you want, which is pretty handy. So that's the online trainer and the offline trainer. The next thing I want to show you guys is how to use a dedicated mod tool for specific games that can give you more mods and more cheats that you can mess around with. And the tool that I'm going to use as an example is one of my own tools. It's called PS4 AIO, and it has a bunch of different mod tools for the Call of Duty series of games. So I will go ahead and show you guys how to connect that up as well, which works a little bit differently, but you'll find the same thing with things like the PS4 toolbox and any other mod tools that run on a computer instead of running on a web browser. Okay, so to use trainers and mod tools that run on your computer, then you need to use the PS4 debug payload instead of the web RTE payload. So you can either run the PS4 debug payload from here or you can load the PS4 debug payload from the actual tool itself by running the bin loader. And then when you run the bin loader, if we switch over to the computer, you just have to run the tool, whichever tool you're using, it'll probably have the ability to inject the payload. Select your firmware up here in the top right, enter your PS4's IP address in the bottom left hand corner, and then click the inject payload button. And as you can see, it has loaded the PS4 debug payload right there from the actual tool itself rather than you know loading it from the exploit so you can either run it just right here click that and load it that way or use the bin loader and inject it on the tool once you have the payload running you can then run the game that you want to mod so we'll just do black ops 4. okay so the game's loaded so once the game loads what you can do is you can select the game from the list of games that are supported so we've got a mod tool for black ops 4 so i just select black ops 4 and then i can click connect and as you can see, it pops up there in the top left hand corner, PS4 AIO connected. And you can see that this version of the game is supported, so the tool will work. So then what I can do is I can click fetch clients, which grabs all of the players in the game. And then you can just select a player that you want to mod and then activate a mod for that player. Okay, so through the power of video editing, I'll just switch it to look like this so that you guys can see. Obviously, this is still running on the computer, but just so you can see things changing in real time. So I can select, you know, a player, I can activate God mode, unlimited ammo, as you can see there. That is now activated. You know, you've got things like uh, glow, which makes enemy players glow, uh, thermal vision, 
turn that off to other different visions, like this other kind of secondary thermal vision. Uh, things like scrambling your UAV, applying kill streaks, so I can activate the kill streaks there on the right. And, you know, recharge equipment, teleportation, so you can teleport to the sky and all kinds of other stuff. And you can do these mods on, you know, different players as well. So, you know, you can select another player and give them god mode or give them thermal vision or give them or freeze them or change their player speed. So you can do all of these mods to all of the different players in the game. There's also more mods here as well. So you can, you know, change gravity, restart the match kick a player from the game, load a different map, uh, all, of that, all of that kind of stuff. Plus, uh, you know, I can teleport all players uh, to my location up here, as you can see. So, yeah, I mean, that's just an example of a mod tool that can give you more mods on specific games. You'll find these dedicated mod tools for specific games that you can play. Um, and this is just one of the mod tools I created a long time ago that I've just updated to support 7.55 and 7.02. So yeah, you can also connect mod tools and mod your games that way as well. So that's basically it for this video. I showed you guys how to use the offline trainer and the online trainer to, you know, activate cheats on many, many, many different games, as well as how to connect a dedicated mod tool and mod specific games using a, mo a dedicated mod tool that runs on your computer. So those are multiple ways that you can basically run cheats on your PS4 games. But of course, there are other ways of modding your games as well. I've already done a tutorial on one of the previous episodes on running mod menus uh, for GTA 5, as well as there's developer menus you can install for certain games. You can also do things like port the PC mods over to the PS4 versions of games for games like Skyrim and Fallout that have tons of mods for the PC version. You can convert those over to run on the PS4 version. Uh, as well as the you know Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake have things like custom skins and stuff, um, player skins and enemy skins that you can you can apply, you can port them over from the PC version to the PS4 version, and you can do the similar things with other games as well. So I'll be covering that stuff in future episodes. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.